Hello, I am the Masked Electron. I'm just an anonymous electron looking to share some of the lessons I've learned in my experience working with electron microscopes over the past few decades. The EM community is a small one, yet there's really no place to go to honestly discuss the different vendors and their equipment. This is what I would like to do here. If you have any information to share on the topic in this video, please leave a comment, or DM me at Twitter to share information anonymously. Please like and subscribe, and make sure to share this with all your electron microscope colleagues. The more the merrier as they say. Now, on to the video. In my opinion, ColorSem is a scam. I will now use Thermo Fisher's own marketing material to explain why I arrived at that conclusion. In 2019 Thermo Fisher debuted an exciting looking EDS product called ColorSem. It was marketed very successfully in a YouTube video, a link to which is in the description below. It generated a lot of buzz in the community at the time. The premise of ColorSem, is that it is an easy to use feature which does extremely fast EDS mapping of a sample. The problem is that this feature is not actually doing real EDS mapping, and is also not technically live. Oxford Instruments has been doing real live EDS mapping for many years now, and their process is exactly as you would expect. They collect large amounts of EDS data through the detector, and then the PC works very hard to compile the masses of data into a map in real time. This can even be done whilst the stage is moving, making the image truly live. The main point to remember is that large amounts of data are required to positively identify an area on a sample as containing a particular element. When dealing with EDS you may often hear that statistics are the name of the game, and this is true. Without enough EDS counts, your map results are suspect. This is true of all EDS results, but mapping is especially susceptible to low count problems since each pixel in the image is being treated as a separate spectrum. So instead of needing enough counts for a single spectrum covering the entire image, you now have to generate enough counts for the thousands of spectra that make up each pixel in the map. That means a lot of counts are required. ColorSem does not do any of that. I will explain to you how it works, and why it is dangerous to rely on to generate data using screenshots taken from Thermo Fisher's publicly available ColorSem webinar, link in the description. The most important thing to know is that ColorSem does not work through fast acquisition and processing of EDS data. Instead, it applies color to a stationary image through image segmentation, and a bare handful of EDS counts. You heard that correctly, the boundaries of the color in these images is determined not by where the element in question is actually found on the sample, but by contrast differences in the black and white image. By detecting contrast differences in the image, an algorithm will designate certain areas as edges, thus generating segments, or motifs, in the image. Each segment then receives an automated paint bucket fill of color. This process is described in the webinar using these diagrams. When the stage stops moving, the image segmentation algorithms will begin processing what is on the screen. This means ColorSem is not live, as Oxford's system is. ColorSem cannot run whilst the stage is moving because the computer algorithms cannot segment a moving image. Everything must be stationary in order for it to work. You will notice this if you ever have a sit-down demo with Thermo Fisher. They will move the sample to the area they want to demonstrate, they will then talk about the image for a while. They do this for a specific reason. They are not trying to educate you about the process, what they are doing is letting the image segmentation algorithms work in the background, so that when they turn on the ColorSem image, it is already segmented. They do not want the customer to sit and watch the segmentation process, but instead, they want us to be dazzled by the immediate appearance of the color image. But I will come back to that later. Each element is assigned a color, and the most plentiful element in each image segment will determine the color that is applied to that segment. As a side note, it appears that color sem only measures elements in atomic percent, not weight percent. But there you have it. That is how color sem works, and it is how it is able to create a color image so quickly. You may say that ColorSem is just a different method, and is still EDS mapping. Unfortunately, Thermo Fisher does not even believe that. As you can see, they separate ColorSem from EDS mapping in their presentations, and in the software itself. ColorSem is not EDS mapping. This entire approach, whilst novel and fascinating, has a number of fatal flaws that are endemic to its design that make it entirely unsuitable for data acquisition. The first problem is that color is being applied based on the bare minimum number of EDS counts. As mentioned earlier, statistics are of utmost importance when working with EDS data. Counts in the single digits are not enough to draw conclusions from. In addition to that, ColorSem requires you to purchase Thermo Fisher EDS detectors with the system. Those detectors have a very poor reputation as unreliable and slow, and are likely still based off the decades-old Noren technology. Thermo Fisher, if I am wrong about that, please correct me in the comments and specify when the old Noren technology was phased out of your product line. Thanks. Low counts are a problem for all aspects of EDS data, but is especially troublesome when found in conjunction with Auto ID. ColorSem applies a color to each segment based off an automatic identification of elements. Experienced users will know that this can pose a serious problem, but less experienced users will have no idea of the dangers lurking in the world of Auto EDS ID. 
let me briefly explain. There are many possible detectable EDS peaks, and quite a few of them can overlap with one another. Though Auto ID software has made great strides in the past decade, it is still imperfect and can easily misidentify certain elements. Any experienced EDS user will check their spectrum when Auto ID has labeled a peak as bromine, to make sure that it is not actually aluminium, or whether a peak labeled zinc is not actually sodium, or arsenic is not actually magnesium, and so on. Auto ID, whilst handy, should never be given free reign by the user since it can be outputting poor and incorrect information. Another unknown factor of ColorSem is whether it is running peak deconvolution algorithms on its data. This is important to help minimize misidentifications and remove other artifacts from the spectrum. It seems unlikely to me that any deconvolution is being performed with the color sem. Since the computer is already working very hard on running the microscope and the image segmentation algorithm, it would seem unwise to overburden it further with resource-intensive deconvolution algorithms. The reason I am not sure this is happening is because of Thermo Fisher's intentionally vague marketing material. In this color sem video posted to their YouTube channel, link in the description, you can see it is clearly labeled that peak deconvolution is being performed. However, whilst there is a color sem image on the screen, we can clearly see that we are in the normal EDS area of the software. Peak deconvolution will of course be performed during normal EDS operation. But will it during color sem operation? The answer is either yes, or, Thermo Fisher has deliberately tried to cloud the issue by conflating color sem operation and normal EDS operation in this video. I can't say which. Thermo Fisher, if I am wrong, and peak deconvolution is being performed on color sem data, please correct me in the comments. Thanks. In my opinion, allowing the color sem to tell you which element is actually present, based on very few counts, and then compounded by sometimes unreliable auto ID, potentially with no peak deconvolution, is a recipe for disaster. Especially if the results are important to your organization. Imagine how you would go about explaining to your superior why the results you got were confusing, or worse, wrong. Another real problem with color sem data is how to interpret it. In the normal color sem image, only a single element is shown in each particular spot. This is because color sem only fills in an image segment based on the predominant element found there, not all elements found there. This means an element in question could be found in many other areas, but you might never know it. Again, this is something experienced users might know to look for, and to check on, but something inexperienced users would have difficulty with. The other problem concerning the interpretation of this data, is how well the image segmentation actually works. Take this image for example. At first glance, it appears very nice, with many striking colors. However, Upon closer inspection, a lot of questions arise. This area is colored purple, but does that really mean the purple colored element is present, or is it colored this way only due to the image segmentation? Is this white particle here also the red element, or is it not being separated out of this larger red motif? It's impossible to say since we can't examine the spectrum at this exact spot, only the spectrum for the whole motif. To do so, we would have to leave color sem, and use the real EDS tools in the software. Let's look at another area with yet a different problem. This area of the image is a disaster. If I had to decide whether this image was of EDS data, or the remains of an exploded Muppet, I would have difficulty choosing. The question could be asked again if these small particles are being labeled correctly, or whether this is simply the result of the image segmentation, or of low EDS counts, or a combination of the two. It's simply impossible to derive any useful or usable information from this area of the image. What do you think goes through your manager's mind when you bring them this image, and try to explain that it proves something important? My conclusions about color sem are these, whilst a novel approach, the errors likely to be encountered make this technique unusable as a serious means of data collection, and I would never personally use it to collect actual data. It is my opinion that color sem is 100% a marketing ploy, a gimmick, entirely designed around making potential customers say, wow, look how fast it colorized my image. Veteran, as well as inexperienced users, can easily be taken in by the smoke and mirrors of this software, and I am making this video so that others will not be fooled in the future. It appears to me that the sole purpose of ColorSem is to trick customers into believing it is doing something it is not, fast EDS mapping. Sadly, I find that it has no practical analytical use, and it is dangerous for anyone to think that it does. I am the masked electron and these opinions are my own. I am not affiliated with any of the organizations mentioned in this video, nor have I been paid to say anything. All the information I have presented was either found by myself, or was shared with me by others in the EM community. Some of these things I have witnessed myself, and some of them were told to me by sources I deem reliable. If you found this useful, please like and comment, and share with your friends in the microscopy world. I believe more discussion about this subject would be positive. Thank you for watching.